Hello again from DNN Custom Creations, I'm Dan. Today I want to do a real short video, believe it or not. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to keep it short, but we're only going to talk about using the uh, straight cut. Uh, and uh, we do that a lot if you want to cut a panel in half, uh, etc. But there's some nuances in that straight cut I think is important for us to understand. So uh, let's take a look at what the straight cut does for us. Now, uh, probably most of us have used this straight line command uh, or straight line cut and not really thought a lot about uh, what's going on behind the scenes. But uh, and and since you're usually cutting it just, uh, you know, maybe cut a panel in half or something, you may not be too concerned about cut quality. Uh, but there are some things that you can do to make it uh, the cut quality uh, excellent. Uh, and in fact, I cut some uh, four inch uh, tubing, square tubing that was a quarter inch thick. I had taken and put it in between my slats so it was sat low enough I could get my torch above it. Uh, but uh, I found that the cut quality was extremely good uh, as long as I took into account some of the things I'm going to try and show you here. <clears throat> so the first thing is you know, when you're using a straight line cut you really have two options. Either you can turn your initial height sensor on or you can turn it off. If, the t if you turn it off then you're going to have to manually jog your torch down to the cut height that you intend to use um, because there will be nothing else that will move the, move the torch like the initial height sensor does. So you see in this particular case, I'm, uh, I'm gonna cut uh, eight inches long. I'm gonna use a cut speed of 153 uh, inches per minute. And I'm using a pierce delay of zero. Because if you don't use initial height sense and you move your torch down to say, let's just assume for sake of argument to 60 thousandths, well, it's not going to, it's going to pierce and cut at that height. So if you're going to use this, you may want to do an edge start so that you're not trying to pierce at that low value. Because if you pierce at a low value, it's not good for your consumables. Um, and so you might want to do an edge start. So I've got a pierce delay of zero because I'm assuming I'm gonna do an edge start here. So let me generate the code there. And uh, so yeah, I do, I'm, I wanna replace what I got. Notice that you get a little warning sign that says, hey, this program doesn't contain any torch height control activation points. Um, well, so we've turned initial height sense off. So, uh, you know, the, it's, it's obvious that you're not going to be using torch height control. Say yes, okay. Now let's take a look at the code, uh, the G code here in this panel. I'm going to try and do this without bumping the, this uh, monitor because it gets this start oscillating and make you all dizzy. But notice that uh, about the only thing it does is turns the torch on uh, and then here's the pause of zero because I'm doing an edge start goes eight inches in the X direction at a speed of 153, and then turns the torch off. That, that's about it. That's all that it's gonna do. That's uh, pretty simplified. But now let's turn, instead, let's turn initial height sense on, and we're gonna set a pierce delay of uh, 0.6, and now we're gonna generate that program. You get the same thing, you want to change the program, yep. Notice you didn't get a warning about torch height control not being there, no uh, height, uh, torch height control uh, entry points. That's because, and here's the, um, a major point, even though we have torch height control here set off, in the straight command, the straight cut command, if you turn initial height sense on, it is going to enable torch height control. And we can see that by actually looking over here in the G-code. Um, so there's, there's your parameters initial height sensor uses to go down and, and find a bot at the top of the plate, uh, spring back a little bit. Uh, there's your, moves it to 150 thousandths for your pierce, turns the torch on, delays for the 0.6 seconds that you said it is. And then now it moves the torch to the cut height of 80 thousandths. Uh, and then H1, there's an indication there's H1 turns on uh, torch height control. A <laughs> couple of things there. Number one, 
There was no place in that uh, straight cut command where you put in the pierce height or the cut height. Uh, Langmuir has decided that when you use straight line command, the pierce height is going to be 150 thousandths and the cut height is going to be 80 thousandths. There also is no spring back, backlash uh, uh, parameter that you set in there. So um, that's something that you should keep in mind. In my opinion, I think they set that to 80,000 instead of 60,000 because they're trying to compensate a little bit for what uh, backlash you might have in your system. Not so much the spring back, but uh, certainly the backlash. Because I, <clears throat> I think a lot of, if you look in the steel cuts, um, you know, the, the typical pierce height is 150 thousandths, but the typical cut height is 60 thousandths. But here you see that they've made that 80 thousandths. So the two important things that, to think about when you're using a straight line cut, if you use initial height sense, it's going to enable uh, your uh, torch height control. I don't know whether when it enables it, if it's like smart voltage where you have to, you know, go 25 thousandths and then another 25 thousandths where it samples the thing and looks for a stable voltage. <clears throat> I don't know if that's what it's doing or not. Uh, all I know is that it, it does enable, in the, at the end of that uh, straight cut, it dis disables, turns uh, torch height control off. So initial height sense, if it's enabled, you got torch height control, whether you select it or not. Up here, it's off. Shows that it's off, but it really is on. If you don't, you've got to jog the torch down to the height that you want to cut at uh, and, and the speed that you want to cut at. Uh, and then go from there, because it uses no initial height sense, no torch height control. I'm not going to demonstrate that here. I'm going to, another video that's upcoming, where I'm going to try and investigate the relationship between cut height and speed. And we're going to look at that, because that'll be pertinent here in the straight line cut. to give us some idea of whether or not this cut height of 80 thousandths uh, could be a problem. So I'm just going to leave it there just to let you know that if you're using straight line cut or straight cut command, uh, what the initial height sense or not using initial height sense, what that means. All right, thanks. DNA. So I uh, showed you how that uh, when you use initial height sensor, um, Langmuir has already determined that you're going to be cutting at 150 thousandths I mean, piercing at 150 thousandths, cutting at 80 thousandths. And uh, I sort of uh, did left you with thinking that you were stuck with that. Well, obviously you're not. You can edit uh, that G-code as long as you don't, lay it, don't mind mucking around a little bit with G-code. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So here um, we've generated rated this, this program using uh, the parameters here, cut length of eight, cut speed here of 175 and a pierce delay of 0.6. We've generated the program and you can see uh, as we scroll down that there is your cut height of 150. Uh, there's your, I mean your pierce height, sorry, 150 uh, thousandths and cut height of 80. So uh, if you want to change that, uh, go up here to the top to this download button and hit download. Now it will uh, output and default to a, tie, a, a file name called generated. So let's just change that. I'm going to make that test and it, and it outputs it as a text file, which is okay. Let's uh, save that. And then now let's go over and find where that was. And there it is, uh, test.txt. Edit this with any kind of text editor, you know, notepad, wordpad, uh, whatever you want to use. Uh, but let's see what that is. And so you can see here, here are the, the parameters, just like we indicated uh, to walk through. Those are, this is the probes down to find the top of the plate, uh, uh, basically moves back up until the torch switch closes, sets that to zero, and then moves to 150 thousandths for Pierce. There it pauses for 0.6 seconds, turns the torch on, pauses for 0.6 seconds, uh, and then uh, moves down to 80 thousandths and does its cut eight inches at 175 uh, 
uh, inches per minute. Uh, by the way, it turned torch height uh, control on right there. <clears throat> so let's say that we had, <clears throat> we're gonna cut uh, some stainless uh, and we were gonna use uh, stainless fine cut air shielded. We'll notice here that the pierce or the cut height they recommend is 20 thousandths, not the 80 thousandths that we have in the code right now. And that the pierce size uh, is 80 thousandths, not the 150 thousandths that uh, we, again, we have in our uh, file right now. <clears throat> so let's change that. So uh, the uh, cut chart said this should be 80 thousandths pierce. So let's make it 80 thousandths. Um, and then let's come down here to the cut height. And the cut chart says 20 thousandths. If you watched my initial height sense, demystifying initial height sense, you'll notice that I, when I calculated or determined what my system backlash was, it was 13 thousandths of an inch. If the system was worn, been used a lot of times, it's probably getting pretty close to 20 thousandths of an inch backlash. I believe that Langmire, uh, when in the steel, which is normally about 60 thousandths of an inch cut height, they add 20 to compensate for the backlash. Uh, and that's, so that's why it got to be 80 thousandths of an inch. Well, we want 20, but my particular um, system has 13 thousandths backlash. So instead of 20, I'm gonna do 20 plus that 13. So I'm gonna make that 33 thousandths of an inch. <clears throat> that's the only two things I'm gonna change. Uh, you could change cut speed, you could do a number of other things there, but that's all I'm gonna change. So file, I'm gonna save. Uh, so it has saved that uh, file now, test.txt, with my changes. <clears throat> so let's, uh, let's now go in and load that. And so I'll just select it. And you'll see you get an error. It says, uh, well, not really an error. It says uh, you've attempted to load a program posted with an out-of-date post processor, you know, update it, or that bottom little comment says, uh, in the meantime, fire control can convert this to make it compatible. Well, go ahead and do that. Convert and save. So it has renamed test.txt to test-v1.6.gcode. And really, the, about the only thing that it does in there is it adds a little header at the top of your file uh, that uh, is, is tells it then when it loads that it uh, is a current G file. So we'll save it. And then you don't even have to go find it again. It says, well, you want to, now that we converted it, you want to load that? Yes. All right, so there it is. And if we walk down through here in the panel, the G code panel, let's take a look. So um, there's the, the probe. And here is now where it's moved to the Pierce height that we, we set when we modified that G-code. There it is, 80,000. M3 turns tor torch on, uh, pauses for 0.6 seconds, and then moves to the new cut height, which is that 33,000 that we set when we modified that G-code. That's it. It's pretty easy to do. Uh, so, and that works for anything that you've generated. If you do a scale and rotate or a pattering, patter, patter, <laughs> patterning, uh, and you generate that, well then you can output that, modify that G code and uh, uh, in the same way we've just done. Hope that helps, thanks a lot.